I love animals. I always have. From my pets at home to wild animals in nature, I'm always excited to learn about new ways that we as humans can help animals in need. There are many people who help animals for their jobs, like veterinarians, zookeepers, and conservation workers. But did you know that engineers can help animals too? Normally, we think of engineers designing technologies to help people solve problems. But there are lots of examples of engineers using the engineering design process to assist animals too. For example, some engineers have developed prosthetic devices to help animals with missing or injured limbs. I wonder, how can engineers use the engineering design process to develop these prosthetic devices? What are some of the challenges they face? And how do they know that their design will meet the animal's needs? To find out, I visited an engineering company called 3D Systems, where Tara Anderson and her team are designing prosthetic devices for a dog named Derby. So tell me a little bit about Derby and what makes him unique. So Derby's this adorable pup who was born with a deformity in his front legs and so they didn't fully develop and so poor little guy couldn't walk or run and needed some help. To help Derby, Tara and her team used the engineering design process, which is a series of steps that engineers use to solve problems. First, they identified Derby's need a prosthetic device that would give him full function of his front legs. A prosthetic device is a technology that is designed to replace the function of a missing or injured body part. She explained that Derby originally had a cart that he could use to get around, but that it didn't let him run or interact with other dogs very well. And it wasn't until after that I had already agreed to foster him that I started making connections with, like, we've got tons of engineers, I've got every technology at my disposal, we have a whole medical division to this, surely we can help them. I mean, that's really what design and, and, and engineering and, and any of this is really about. It's about improving things. Um, and so to you know be able to see Derby who could not run at all and now to be able to see him like sprint across a room, that is a, a wonderful feeling. So did Derby ever get adopted by anybody? Derby did get adopted by a fantastic family. Um, so Derby is actually residing in Pennsylvania. Tara and her team at 3D Systems wanted to use 3D printing to try and solve the problem. 3D printing is a method engineers can use to design a technology on a computer and print out a physical object. Engineers like Tara also speak with other experts who can help them further identify the problem was a process of investigation first. Like, where do we start? Where, who do I talk to to make sure that we are keeping Derby's best interests in mind and that this is medically good for him? So it was a process of uh, talking to different vets, evaluating his condition, um, and then it was finding a prosthetic specialist because while we have lots of engineers and lots of designers here, we, we definitely don't have a, a, a vet or a prosthetic device specialist, especially when it relates to animals. Tara explained that there are four criteria they needed to keep in mind as they engineered. The device needed to function like the body part it was replacing. The device also needed to be durable, meaning it wouldn't wear out. It needed to be attached easily and quickly so Derby can get out and play. And of course, it also needed to be comfortable for Derby to wear. 3D printing allowed Tara and her team to move very quickly through imagining, planning, and creating the initial versions of the design. She showed me some of the designs that she saved. This is um, the first uh, sort of stab at design um, that we were going through. So we've called this the cup, and this is what his actual uh, little elbow fits into. So once we had the first design, uh, we tried that on, and it was pretty obvious right away that that was not going to work on Derby. Tara investigated ways that other engineers have solved similar problems. Engineers working on prosthetic devices for humans developed the running blade, a curved shape designed to replace the function of the human foot for athletes running on hard surfaces. Tara was inspired by the design, but wanted to make sure that Derby could run on both hard surfaces and soft ground without getting the edge of the blade stuck in the dirt. She imagined a solution. What if there were no edge? The curve of the running blade could connect back at the top, forming a loop. Uh, I, you know, went through that whole process of, uh, of trying to sketch something out that hopefully would work for him. And you know, this was in terms of watching him, in terms of watching his shoulder rotation and how he was moving. Tara and her team created many versions of the loop design. 
They tested each one with Derby to figure out how well the device functioned for his legs. They found that some of them didn't fit Derby's needs. And how did you know that it didn't work? Oh, he tells you right away. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's, that's part of the thing that's interesting with working with a dog is that you can't have a verbal conversation with them. But it's almost easier to a degree because you put it on him and you can just tell right away because he is just looking at you like, what am I supposed to be doing with this? <laughs> like, okay, clearly that's not working. So, um, and it was watching him trying to walk in that, though, that got me to the next design part of it. You know, the design was that ended up working for him um, was purely just based on him telling me uh, that that's what he needed. Terrace designs also needed to address another criteria, durability. Why is it important for prosthetic devices to be durable for a dog like Derby, for example? Uh, I mean, the durability aspect is an extremely important part of the prosthetic. I mean, you don't want, you know, poor Derby out there running and something breaks. <laughs> like, that's just a poor thing. He'll be traumatized, it might be painful. Um, so durability is a, a huge component to the design process. Um, and that really brings up in terms of the type of materials that we've looked at for him. Uh, but then it also brought up the question of, you know, I mean, Derby's a dog and he thinks everything's a chew toy, including his own prosthetics. <laughs> Tara has been investigating how to create prosthetic devices with other materials. She has to weigh using more durable materials such as metals against lighter weight but less durable plastic. The only way to know what will work best is to test it with Derby. Tara continues to send improved designs to Derby's family for him to test. She designs each new version of the prosthetic device to better meet the criteria of durability, attachment, comfort, and function. The design process never really ends. You know, you never get to a point where like, this is perfect and it never needs to be touched again. There's always ways to tweak it and improve it. Tara's team is a great example of how the engineering design process is never really finished. The repeated cycles of improving and testing a design allow engineers to develop many iterations of a prosthetic device that better fit an animal's needs. It's exciting to meet engineers who care so much about animals and who use the engineering design process to help them. Tara's team faced so many interesting challenges when they were developing Derby's prosthetic legs. It makes me wonder, animals are also different, that designing a prosthetic device for each type must present unique challenges. How would you engineer something for an animal as big as an elephant? What about a technology to replace a bird's beak? Many animals don't live on land. Could you develop a prosthetic device that could help a fish swim underwater? Using the engineering design process and a little bit of teamwork, the next engineer to solve these problems could be you.